Good morning, church. Come on, church. Good morning. Good morning. Today's a good day. And I know that a lot of you guys can agree with that because it's the beginning of a new year. And I know that last week was the first Sunday of the new year, but we're still in the very beginning of it. I know that many of you guys are still dreaming and still having desires and inspire, getting inspired of the new transition you want for your life. I know that many of you guys have sat down and written out and created, designed, and planning on how you can execute whatever you want to do for the new year for 2020. I know that many of us have looked at our lives from 2019 and looked at the glimpse of our life and realized that, hey, I need some change. Or for some of you, you've looked in 2019 in your life and you've realized, I want more of what God is doing. And I want to stand here today to tell you this. I have so many stories to share. I have so many things that I can't wait to help you guys see again. That we're starting a new series today, Created to Be. And, and for me, whenever I looked at the series Created to Be, the word B is B-E, but I, I believe it should have just been Created to Be and just the letter B. Because we're going to look at four different places that we were created to be at. We were created to be a part of, created to build. And I want us to look at that through this whole entire series. And it's the beginning of the year. Start fresh. Start on the right track. Start in the right place you want to be with God. For many of you guys, you said that I want to be here early every Sunday. It's okay. You can start over again. I know that some of you guys had some trouble, some struggles getting up this morning. It's okay. Start over again. It's not too late. Don't sell yourself short by giving up already on the second week. Try again. Try again. I want to share that with us in the very beginning of our message because of this. I know already the enemy has tried to change things around. But you have to believe in Jesus. And that's what we get to speak about today. We're created to believe in Jesus. If you can just capture that and run with that for the rest of the year, I promise you, I promise you, the outlook on your relationship with God, the outlook on your relationship with your family or your friends or your co-workers, co-workers will change to believe in Jesus. See, I think that many of us, whenever we start out our New Year's resolutions, or, or let's not even call it resolutions, let's just say our list of things that we want to improve about ourselves. Many times we think and have a game plan of, okay, number one on the top of almost everybody's list, either get fit, lose weight, transform my body, whatever it is. That's some, some of us, that's at the top of our list. And for some of us, we aspire to get a better job opportunity or finish my education or um, expand my education, go for my master's or my PhD or whatever it is. And, and then other, others of us, we may have become financially fit. For some of us, it's bring a friend to church. For some of us, it's, it's pray for my family every day or, or read my Bible every day. There's all these things in our list that we create, and there's nothing wrong with creating a list. I, I want you to create a list. But when you create your list, don't forget that you have Jesus Christ on your side. And don't forget that Jesus is going to help you through every single one of these things if you allow him to do it. And for many of us, in many of the lists that we've created, many of the years that we have made New Year's resolution have failed at it, I want to challenge you that this year will be different. That this year, whenever you look at the list that you have, how can I apply, how can I have God help me in this situation? Many of us don't see it that way. Many of us, and I've, I've spoke about it throughout the whole entire year of 2019, we've, I've spoken about even finances. I'm a living testimony when it comes to finances that God has helped me. I had many times where I prayed prayers, God, please help my finances, please, 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 Lord. And I figured out I was praying for the wrong thing. You know, one thing that Pastor Michael spoke about at the Dream Team Retreat is sometimes we pray for God to take us out of situations, but why not pray that God would help us through these situations? Help us through them. I, I've learned that so much at the end of the year. I've had so many things where I've asked God, God, take me out of this situation. I don't want to be in it. You know, and, and for some people in here, take me out of this heartache or take me out of this pain that I'm dealing with with my family. But for some of us, if we can capture on the fact that God wants to take us through these things to make us stronger, to help us see that he can help us through all things, taking us through it is a different mindset. And in 2019, some of us may have the wrong idea of what Jesus could do in our life, but in 2020, let's step in knowing what he can do. 
Let's step in knowing that he's going to take us through these situations. So instead of saying, God, God, uh, well, here's my game plan for finances. What do you think? Ask him, God, what do you think I should do about my finances? How can we get through this, Lord? God, I have a family member I've been praying for for so long. What can I do? What can I do to do this, God, because I need your help. How can we do it together? Bring God into every single thing. I'm going to share with you guys stories after stories after stories in my message to show you that believing in Jesus was a game changer in 2019 for you so that in 2020, you have no doubt but to believe in him. My job today, my opportunity today is to teach you to believe in Jesus As simple as that, for many of us, we're like, of course I believe in Jesus. I wouldn't be here, Pastor, if I didn't believe in Jesus. I get that. I get that a lot of you guys believe who he is, but do you believe what he can do in your life? Because I believe it. In the very beginning of 2020, in the very beginning of the new year, my wife and I, we stood at the front of Forest Glen at the altar in that building, and we prayed for each other. We prayed for each other for a specific thing or two specific things, and, and you guys have heard me share it, Jeannie and I, one, one day, it, it, does, it may be 2020, we said to each other, Lord, help us to open up a clinic. Help us to open up a pediatric clinic so that Jeannie can work the way that you have created her to work. We prayed that. Never, ever, ever have we prayed that prayer before because we've always had this thing where we're like, oh no, that's, it's, it's too much work, it's scary, there's too many you know, laws and rules that you have to, but all those fears, we just said, God, take us through it. What do you want us to do? How should we do it? Who are you gonna bring to help us through this? And we believe it. We believe that one day you're gonna, you're gonna see our clinic and one day you're gonna bring your children to our clinic. We believe it. Because we believe that through anything, through anything that we put Christ in, he'll pull through for us. And we have to have that kind of faith. There's a lot of things we're going to enter in in 2020. There's a lot of opportunities. There's a lot of game-changing opportunities that you're going to step into. And if you believe that God can do it, if you believe that God can be a part of it, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. I want us to do this really quick before we get started. I want us to pray the very beginning of our year together here in our English service, I want us to pray. And this is what we're praying. God, whatever dreams and whatever things that I want to do in 2020 with my life or in my family's life, Lord, whatever things I've written down on my list, Lord, I ask right now, Jesus, that you help me get through these things. Help me accomplish these things. Help me to check it off my list every single time that something is done on the list, Lord, I will give you praise for Every single time something happens, Lord, I will give you praise and I will give a praise report, Lord. I thank you so much for what you're doing in our lives here. God, when we believe in you and we believe that you can do all things in Jesus' name, amen. That's your prayer for 2020. That's your prayer that you should say every single day. God, I believe in you and I believe that I can do all things with you. All things. I believe it. It's time to, in my opinion, inspire people about Jesus. It's, it's time for us to inspire the church, inspire the world about Jesus. There's too many things that I've seen in our world that are causing people to not want to believe in Jesus, but it's time for us to inspire people to believe and to dream again. One of my favorite things, of course, and uh, y'all may think it's tacky or whatever, it's 2020, 2020 vision. What I do not have, I wear contacts, I wear glasses. I don't have 2020. If there's any of you guys in here that have 2020 vision, God has blessed you. There's so many times where Jeannie and I have, you know, we try to watch TV at night and we take off our contacts and we're wearing glasses and it's just like, it's not the same experience, you know, because for me, I don't really have a bridge on my nose so that my glasses just keep sliding down. And, and for some of us, you know, glasses are something we always lose. It's not something that we always wear. So it's so hard to find when you need them. And sometimes whenever you need a clear, sometimes whenever you need clear vision and, and you, you forget where your glasses are put, you're just walking around the house and everything looks blurry. But I want to share with you guys a story really quick. I remember the first time, the first time I ever put contacts in my eyes. I remember it was a struggle. It was a struggle to put contacts in my eyes. You always had the idea of, ah, I'm touching my eyes, or like, this is weird, or what finger am I supposed to put the contact on, and how am I supposed to open my eyelid, and all these things. You, you're laughing, and you're remembering the first time you put on contacts, 
You know, there's some people that dry their hands a certain way before they touch their contacts. There's certain people that have a regimen where they like, you know, wash it a certain way and they, they close their caps a certain way or they put one on. Some people have a thing that they do with contacts. And I remember the first time putting on contacts. I have never seen clearer before. I remember sitting in the autometry office and, and putting in contacts. It took me about, you know, 20, 30 minutes to put them in. And then as soon as I got them in, I was like, whoa, I can see again. I was like, I've never seen details like this before. I've never seen color like this before. I've never seen, you know, what people actually truly look like. Because sometimes it's like you can see the picture, but it's not clear. And I feel like some of us can see the picture that God wants us to see, but it's not clear. And all we have to do is believe in Jesus that he'll clear our vision up. See, whenever we go to the autometry office, one of my least favorite things to do, because I think that it doesn't work, but it does work every single time. One or two. One or two. I wish Christina was like sitting here so I could make fun of her. It's one or two. One or two. And every single time, I'm like, it's the same. Okay, three or four. And I feel like it's the same thing. They're just trying to get me to look at one or two, but they say a different number. Three or four. One or two. And I'm like, nothing's changing. And then they go, okay, one or two on both. And you're like, whoa, I can see every Z, X, Y, W, Z. You're like, I've never seen that line before. And I think that in 2020, if we can let God adjust our vision, adjust what we weren't able to see before, we'll be able to have a vision, a clearer vision to see what he has planned out for you in 2020. Amen? That's just a little bit that I want to share because I believe that as a church, if we can all see, it would make a difference. If we can all have a clear vision, it would make a difference. It's, it's kind of like if we had a team of people, and if we had a team and we were playing a game together, and then three of you guys forgot your glasses and you really need your glasses, and the other three had perfect vision, it'd be so hard to play. And there's so many times where I've tried to play sports and I'm wearing, I'm wearing glasses that day, and I'm like, I'm just gonna take my glasses off to play. What a mistake that was to try to play without glasses. And what a mistake it would be to try to go into 2020 without asking God to give you clearer vision. Ask the Lord to clear up your vision, clear up your sight. Believe in Jesus again. One or two. One or two. And just ask yourself that question. Am I seeing clearly, Lord? Can you clear up my vision so I can see and truly see what you want to do for my life and for the church and for my family? Can I see again? Can you bring sight to my eyes again? Can I see in 2020 vision, Lord? That's what I believe that our church is moving towards. Now today, I get to speak about the first sermon of the series about believing in Jesus. And I believe that many of us need to just believe in Jesus again. Believing in him again in different aspects of our life to believe in him again. When I was putting this message together, I thought to myself, Lord, What's, what story from the Bible goes well with this? And, and I thought, oh, it would be perfect. Let's, let's just talk about the man that got healed from his sight. And I was like, no, that's not it. What story should I share, Lord? Oh, let's talk about believing in Jesus again. So let's go from the very beginning of mankind when we were created by him. No, that's not it. What should I share, Lord? What should I share? And I remembered a story. And that's the story that I want to read us today. It comes from John 4, 46 to 54, and it's a short story. Some of you guys may have read this story, but actually you just read it really quick and passed to the next. But I want us to look at the story, and I'll have Tuan put up the, the scripture for us to read. And it's about, it's about a man who hears that Jesus is coming, and he, go, and he leaves his town, and he goes to, to find Jesus because his son is sick and is about to die. And my, the, my favorite part about the scripture, my favorite part about the whole entire story is how much he believed in Jesus. For him to leave his town, to have that kind of faith, to believe in Jesus, to believe that Jesus was going to do something, was the best part of the story. Let's look at it. Once more he visited Cana in Galilee, where he had turned the water into wine. And there was a certain royal official whose son laid sick at Capernaum. When this man heard that Jesus had arrived in Galilee from Judea, he went to him and began, he went to him and begged him to come and heal his son, 
who was close to death. Unless you people see signs and wonders, Jesus told him, you will never believe. The royal officer said, sir, come down before my child dies. Go, Jesus replied, your son will live. The man took Jesus at his word and departed. While he was still on the way, his servants met him with the news that his boy was living. When he inquired as to the time when his son got better, they said to him, yesterday at one in the afternoon, the fever left. Then the father realized that this was the exact time at which Jesus had said to him, your son will live. So he and his whole household believed. This was the second sign Jesus performed after coming from Judea to Galilee. This story for some of us, if, if, if you were reading in, in John, if you're reading through the, through the Bible, it's really short. And for some of us, we, we, we see this story as something of Jesus heals. Awesome. But in my opinion, the best part of the, the story is how much this royal official believed in Jesus' power and ability. To believe in Jesus is what we're speaking about today. This royal official, he had no clue if it was going to happen or not, but he believed. He didn't know if he was even going to find Jesus, but he went. He didn't even know if something was going to change in his son's life. He was holding on for dear life. I have nothing else to, to do. I have nothing else to go to. He probably tried every doctor in the town, every medication he could. He knew nothing else except I have to believe that there is this man that everyone keeps talking about that is healing people from town to town. I have to believe that he can heal my son. I have to believe in Jesus. And so we read, we read in the story that this man leaves his town and he goes, and, and, and I imagine at the time, he don't have cars, so he hopped on a horse and he went and he rode as fast as he could to try to find a man that he may not have ever seen before. And he just rode, he rode until he found Jesus. And when he got to Jesus, he begged, please, Jesus, heal my son. Please come with me to the town. Please, please, I need you. I need you. Please come. And Jesus' response, of course, it's the best part of the story. The royal official said, sir, come down before my child dies. Go, Jesus replied, your son will live. As we get this opportunity during the service to break down this story, I want to talk about three different parts that I believe that will help us believe in Jesus even more. For many of us, when we step into 2020, we have, like I said, a list of things that we want to accomplish or a list of things that we want changed in our life. There's three things that I feel that the Lord wants me to share this morning so that we can remember these things. And these are the three things that I want you to write down. Believe he is able. That's one. The second one, believe he is there. And the last one, believe he cares. As simple as that. Believe he is able. Believe he is there. Believe he cares. As simple as that. Why is it that simple? Because that's literally what Jesus is about. He's able, he's always there with you, and of course he cares about you. As simple as that. Why do I want to share it that way, and why do I feel that it should be shared this way? Because when you go out to the world to share it to people to believe in Jesus again, what are the three things about Jesus that you've learned today? He's able, he's there, and he cares. As simple as that. If somebody was to come up to you and say, why do you believe in Jesus? Well, He's able, he's always there for me, and he cares for me, and he cares for you. Segue into bringing them to Christ. As simple as that, three things. I believe that God has given me a clear vision of how to preach the gospel to help us to be able to preach the gospel to people out, outside of the church. And my thing is this, Jesus kept it simple. He said, go, your son's gonna live. As simple as that. And in the story, when we read, it's like the composure of, of the royal official. He's frantic. He's worried. He's in a, in a state of chaos. And in many people in the world, they're frantic. They're worried in a state of chaos. Their marriage is in shambles. Their health is deteriorating. Their finances are crumbling. Their marriage is, is, is almost out the door. They're, they're running frantic. You can introduce them to Jesus. You can introduce them to somebody who is able, somebody who is always there and somebody who cares about their life. And as simple as that, that's all that it takes for people to believe is that you can show them that there's somebody out there who you believe in 
that is able to change their situation, that is always there for every situation in their life, and somebody that cares. God is able. God is there. God cares. I promise you, you won't forget that later when you walk out the door, because I'm going to say it a hundred times. God is able. God is there. And God cares. As simple as that, that's how we're going to break down the message today. I want to talk about how God is able. When we look at the scripture and when we look at what we just read, when we look at the ability that we know that Jesus has, this royal official has never met Jesus before, but have only heard good things about him. And he knows that he is able to do it. He comes down to the point of desperation, to the point of leaving his town, not knowing exactly where Jesus is going to be, but he goes. And for many of us, what can we learn from that story? What can we learn from this particular portion about believing in Jesus? You just have to know that he's able. You just have to know that he has the ability to change your situation. You have to believe. You have to believe. For many of us in, in our lives, we go through trials and we go through different things that test our faith. And all that it takes for you to be able to get through it is this, is believe that Jesus is able. That's it. I know that many of you guys are sitting in this room that have a situation that you're going through. And I just want to let you know that Jesus is able to change that situation. I just want to let you know you started out your new year and you thought, great, it's another 2019. No, I just want to let you know that Jesus is able to change your situation. That's how we're going to start this message. I want all of us to get to the point where we believe today that Jesus is able to change every situation in our life. You know why? Because you have to be able to see clearly again. When you first were born and you were first coming out into this world, many of us, we had 2020 right away. For many of us who went through life and all these things, we had belief in whatever we believed in at the time. And our vision started to get, get a little bit cloudy. And then whenever we gave our life to Christ and we let him change us from the inside out, we got clearer vision again. I believe that many of us have forgotten to change out our spiritual contacts or whatever it may be. We forgot to go and, check and ask the Lord, hey, Lord, check my vision again. I don't see as clearly anymore. What I used to see clearly is not clear before my eyes. Change my vision, Lord. God is able. God is able. I know that there are some of you sitting in this room right now coming to church today. It was difficult for you. And I'm not talking about just coming early. I'm talking about there's a difficulty that you have brought from 2019 to 2020 and you're still holding on. But God is able. God is able. Many of you have woken up this morning asking yourself, will 2020 be any different than 2019? Because when you woke up today, it felt like it was still the same year. I just want to let you know, God is able in every situation of your life. God is able. Let's, let's take a look back and, and, and let's check to see if God is able and if that's real. In 2020, I want us to start declaring in our life that God is able to change whatever situation. God is able to bring any family member to church. God is able to open up any door of opportunity for me because that's who my God is. He's able. How are we going to, how are we going to testify for this? How are we going to testify? Well, let's think about 2019. Many of you guys in 2019 asked the Lord, Lord, I want to bring a friend to church. I will testify on my behalf for overseeing on, on the youth ministry that we started our every third Friday service. Every third Friday, we had a service here. And it just continually just kept growing and growing and growing and growing. And did I do anything, did I do anything uh, to bring more people? No. It was the student's heart that believed in Jesus, that he would bring their friends to church so that they would get saved. God was able. How do I know that that's true? I just want to let you know our Thanksgiving service. I'm going to boast a little bit on our God. We had 22 guests, not, not 22 members from the church, 22 guests show up. 22 guests show up to our Friday service. And that's because the students believed that Jesus was able to bring their friends who they've been praying for all year to come to church. God is able. 
I had people ask me, what are you doing? Like, like how do you get more? I said, only Jesus is doing it, not me. All, 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 all we did was tell the students to believe in Jesus, that their friends would come and ask. That's it. God is able. God is able to do these miracles in your life. God is able, and it's your doubt that stops it. God is able. I know that for many of us in this room, and, and I'm, I get to, like I said in the very beginning of my message, I get to testify about this. I had, Jeannie and I, we were praying for, for financial help from the Lord. Lord, help us, help us. What are we going to do with our finances? Hey, I can let you know, 2019, in the very beginning, man, it looked crazy. We, we, ju we just left Temple, Texas to come here to live in Houston. We're living like students still. We, we, we weren't living on a good salary at the time because we were in transition, and then we were still moving, and the move of the house was a little bit difficult and all these kind of things because Jeannie still had to live in Temple, Texas while I lived here in Pearland for a little bit, and, and, and the move was a little awkward. It was hard. Hey, but God was able. God was able to help me through it all. And what about our finances? Jeannie and I can stand up in this place and say, we give God praise. You know why? Hey, credit card debt free, baby. Let's go. We prayed for financial freedom and the Lord provided for us. Here's the thing. When you believe in every situation of your life that God is able, you will surely see the power of Jesus working in your life. Many people think that the power of Jesus only applies to whenever you have you know, problems with sin. That's one aspect of what Jesus can do for you. No, he wants to open up doors of opportunity. He wants to bring joy into your life. He wants to bring peace and love into your life. But many of us only see him on a one track kind of thing. Hey, God is able to do all things in your life. What, what's another way that we can look at it? Besides friends, besides finances, we had family members come to church that we have never seen and we've been praying for for so long and they've came to church. We had family members give their life to Christ and you've been praying so hard. We had family members come to, to God, come, come and give their life to the Lord here at this altar. And in 2019, in the very beginning of the year, you may not have believed it. No way. I, I, I talked to somebody and they're like, for years, pastor, I was praying for my dad to come to the Lord. For years. And all of a sudden, he just gave his heart to the Lord. What a blessing. Hey, God is able. Many of you guys ha have heard Pastor Khan's testimony, and he shared it at the Dream Team retreat. Before the Holy Spirit entered into his life, he had a temper problem. Before the Holy Spirit entered in into his life, he didn't have clear vision. And when the Holy Spirit came into his life, his vision was cleared. Things in his life changed. For many of you guys that may not have a clear vision right now, and it could be that you, you get angry about things. It could be that you don't see the joy in the day. Hey, ask the Lord. God, I need clearer vision. And I'll tell you this, Jesus is able to do it. And as much as I can say it over and over, I'm going to tell you that because that's what I believe 100%. I believed it in 2019. I'm believing it now in 2020. Jesus is able. He's as good as he can be. He's as powerful as he is. And he loves you just as much as he has loved you from the beginning. God is able. And we'll leave it just like that. When you go out into the world today and when you go out, out of the church today and somebody comes up to you and says, well, what'd you do today? Oh, I went to church and I learned something. What'd you learn? Hey, God is able. I don't know what your situation looks like in your life, but I just want to let you know. 2020, God is able. Let him through. If you have that mindset, if we have that mentality that God is able, the church, everything that we want to do, the big, the big things that are happening at our church and the big ministries that are opening up in our church, God is able. I just want to let you know something. In 2019, we didn't have, we, we, we didn't have an idea of really what the hospital ministry was going to look like. We didn't know. We just said, Lord, we want to be used this way. And Miss Diana brought it up. She shared her testimony on Sunday. For many of you guys that heard it, it started from, from her praying for her daughter because her daughter was in the ICU a lot. And then somebody came and asked that her to pray for their, their child. And she was like, Lord, how can I go? I, I'm worrying about my child. But I'll tell you this, God is able. And in, in 2019, what God did for our hospital ministry was a game changer where it even came through to 2020 and we're still doing it. For many of you guys that don't know all the teddy bears that you brought and all the things that you, uh, stuffed animals that you brought to bring joy into somebody's life, man, Julianne was sharing me um, that day and, and Paul was there too. They were giving out the teddy bears and some of these kids were just saying, for me? Really? Why? And they would just embrace and hug that teddy bear. 
I'll just let you know, if you think that you can't reach somebody out there, God is able and he can. And through a teddy bear, yes, he can. Our God is able to move mountains. Our God is able to do incredible things that our mind cannot comprehend. But our sight, when we allow God to change our vision, we can see again that our God is able. Many times I believe that we lose sight in the fact that our God is able to move mountains still today. And I, I'm going to share with you stories after stories after stories to make sure you know that God is able, and it's not just through my life. There are many of you guys sitting in this room that I don't know if you remember the things that God has done in 2019. I don't even know if you re recall the things that he did in 2019. We had babies that were born that weren't supposed to be born. We had marriages happen that, I did, that, that they didn't even think that they were going to get married. We had job opportunities that opened up that people never thought that they would even be in that kind of place. We had, we had uh, different, different things happen for our church that we never thought was going to happen. We had families come to Christ that we never believed that was going to happen. But you know what? You know who always believed? Jesus. He believed that one day that it was going to happen, and he knew it. So that's why he died on the cross for us, so that we had a better opportunity at life. He did that for us. You know, my favorite message that, that I've ever, ever, ever got to speak on this pulpit was he did that. Because that's something that I say all the time still. Every time something happens, I'm just like, yeah, he did that. I have that much faith in our God because there's so many things that he has done in my life that I can't ever doubt that he loves me and I can't ever doubt that he is not able because he is. And when you can have that faith and when you can have that boldness to believe and start declaring that he is able, you won't think anything else. You won't think anything else. When God steps into the room, Things change. Things change. He is able. I think about the story, and, 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 and you know, it was funny because I watched a, a video on, on YouTube, just a reenaction of, of, of this portion of the Bible. And you see just this royal official. He's riding, and he's all suited up and whatever. He, you know, the armor that he was wearing or whatever. And you see him coming on a horse with people riding behind him. And then you just see Jesus and the disciples walking and it was kind of like, it was like a random kind of like scene where it was just like, all of a sudden they were just riding and, and, and then they see Jesus. And I imagine that in the mind of the royal official, he was just riding and just thinking, if I can only just find this man, if I can only just find this man, I can, if only I can just find Jesus, if I can just find him, I know my son's going to live. I know my son's going to live because I've heard stories and stories and stories of this man who's called the Messiah. And I know, and I know, and I know that if he can do it for those people, he can do it for my son. And I believe, and I believe, and I believe, and I believe, and I believe I'm going to find this man. And he finds Jesus. And you know, with all the things that he probably created in his mind to believe what Jesus was going to be like, I don't think the response that Jesus gave him was what he thought was going to be. I think in his mind, he thought to himself, I'm going to ride my horse there. I'm going to ride an extra horse there too, because this man's coming back home with me and he's going to lay hands on my son and my son's going to rise up and, and he's going to not be sick anymore. And he gets there and he sees Jesus and Jesus says to him, go home. He's like, what? I just rode all the way out here to find you. You're the, you're the most, go home. Your son's, he's healed. And, and, and the best part about the scripture, in my opinion, the best part about it is this. Jesus replied, go. Jesus replied, your son will live. My favorite part, the man took Jesus at his word and departed. The man took Jesus at his word and departed. Who has the final word in your situation, you or Jesus? Because when Jesus said, go, your son will live, that man believed it with all his heart at that moment. Hey, Jesus is able, I'm going home. And as soon as he rode home, the testimonies came right away. Do you know what I saw in that portion of, the, of that exchange right there? When you come to God with a heart of expectation, believing in what he can do, and he replies back to you, go, your son is healed, or go, your situation has changed. And when you leave, testimonies will come. As soon as you allow Jesus to work in your life. Let's look at the second part. Believing that he is there. 
Believing that Jesus is there is probably one of the most difficult things that I think a lot of us go through. Is because for some of us, believing that Jesus is there in our situation during the chaos and all the headaches and all the heartaches and all of whatever it is that you go through, having the faith to believe that he is there is one of the most difficult things that I think we go through. Why is that? Because for some of us, we want it to be done as soon as we come. As soon as we go to Jesus, Lord, I, I, I need this done. And we're, we're just waiting for him to just change, change the situation. But sometimes Jesus is like, hey, it's taken care of. Believe. You know, I've heard stories about people praying and asking God for a job opportunity to open up. And I've had people think that the opportunity was going to come the next day, like the phone call was going to be rung the next day. And I've had to tell people, no, just keep believing, just keep believing, just keep believing. You know, I had somebody that was, I had somebody that's very close to me that I think almost for a year, this person did not have a job. Almost for a year. He had a great job. Then the job just stopped because they didn't need him anymore. And not that he got fired, it literally just, they didn't need it anymore. And almost for a whole entire year, he had no job. And I remember, I remember praying on a Tuesday service with this person saying, hey, in your situation with your, God, with, with your job, he's there. And he's going to open up the doors of opportunity for you. Just believe it. It wasn't like it was the very next day. It was like, I think almost like a month later or so. And he came back with the praise before saying, I got a job. And I said, yeah, I know God's able. And, and I know that God can do that in your life. And I knew that he was going to do that. That person probably has the best job right now. He's loving it. He has the, in my opinion, he's like living on cloud nine right now. Only because he believed that God was still there, even through the tough situations. I want, I want to talk about the portion in the scripture that proves that. The royal official said, sir, come down before my child dies. Go, Jesus replied, your son will live. The man took Jesus at his word and departed. To believe in Jesus that he is there, to believe that he is there in your situation is what this Roman official did, or this royal official did. This is what he did. He believed Jesus' word. He took him for what he said, and he said, you know what? I'm going to trust that Jesus is there. I'm going to trust that Jesus did what Jesus said he would do. As soon as he, and the word is departed, as soon as he left, he knew, he knew, he knew, I can trust this man's word. And as soon as he was even going home, he didn't even get to his house yet. And his servants rode out to tell him the good news, that your son is healed. And, they, and he asked, at what time? At what time was it? One o'clock. And, he, and, and, and the royal official remembered at that time, at one o'clock was when Jesus said, go, your son is healed. And he took the Lord for his word and said, I believe, and left. How many of you guys have that kind of faith to believe that Jesus is there? How many of you guys have that faith to believe that when Jesus answers, you don't have to wait at the doorstep, uh, is it here yet? Is it here? You can live life and know and have faith to believe that he is there in your situation. God is, Jesus is able and he is there. The second thing, the, the second portion about he is there, the stories that I want to share are incredible. For many of us, we prayed and we prayed and we prayed for family members to come to Christ. For me, in my ministry for 2019, I've gotten to see two fathers come to Christ. The first dad that I got to see was the Andrade's family's father. I remember watching him walk up to the altar. I prayed for something completely different. I prayed for their marriage and their ministry that they have in Mexico and all these things. And then I looked at him and I said, oh, wait. I feel like he wants to give his heart to the Lord. And I brought Pastor Khan over and we got to witness it right before every single one of his kids and his wife. Right there that he gave his heart to the Lord. Do you know how long the kids have been believing that that was going to happen? Do you know how long that they had to wait for that to happen? But they believed that one day, they believed that Jesus was there in that situation. 
That's not my story. That's their story. That's not my testimony. That's their testimony. How do I know that God is real? He's not just moving in my life. He's moving in their life. The second father that I got to witness come to the Lord was uh, Cindy and Lynn and An's father-in-law. You know, they weren't even in the same building that day. And I remember clearly, it was, it was in December, just around our Christmas service time. I remember that day was just a wild Sunday. I remember. And, and the joke is, every time Pastor Sam preaches, something has to happen at the church. I don't know why, just something happens. And I said, you know what? The first time that something like that happened, Roman's dad got saved. I said, you know what? Something's going to happen today. I came into that Vietnamese service. I said, Lord, do what you got to do. I know something's going to happen. I remember coming down right after the message, and I remember praying for people right here. And then I remember seeing An and Lynn's dad and Cindy's dad walk up this way with, with their mom. I had no clue that he wasn't even a believer yet. No clue at all. I remember him standing right here, and I remember going up to him to pray for him. Like, again, I did not even pray for him to receive salvation because I thought in my mind, oh, he's been going to church for a while now. Never thought. And then Lynn's mom said, Pastor, can you pray for him? He wants to accept Christ. And I was like, wait, what? I was like, this whole time he's been at church, he's never accepted Christ? It's like, yes, thank you, God. I, I, I'm honored to do this. And I stood right there, and I led him to accept Jesus as his Lord and Savior. And the best part about it was this. The three kids didn't even know. And as soon as they walked over, and as soon as I walked over to CLC, I see Cindy right at the Russian doors on the phone. She, hi, do you know that dad accepted Christ? And I was like, wait, they didn't know? And Lynn's face was like shocked when I saw her. And I just see An, and An's like, wait, did he just walk up there by himself? I was like, yeah, he just came up. Oh, I missed it. I wish I was there. I'm praying for something. And I said, I didn't even know he wasn't a believer. Why don't you tell me, you know? And, and I didn't know. And then An told me that he was so filled with joy that he went and hugged his father-in-law and he walked behind the curtains and he just cried because he believed that one day, one day, that his father-in-law would get saved. One day. He believed it. One day. He believed Jesus is there in this situation. I believe that you're there. One day, my father-in-law will be saved. 2020, Roman and An's family, they get to walk through these doors with their fathers knowing that they're going to see them in heaven one day because they believe that God is there in their situation. That's how you know that God's real. That's how you know that God is able and that God is there in your situation, is that those aren't my stories. Those are the stories of the people sitting next to you. There's so many other stories. One story that I want to share in particular. In 2018, a mother and a daughter had a dream and a vision to open up a daycare. In August of 2018, in 2019, they celebrated one year of the Academy of Little Angels being open for one year. That is amazing that a daughter and a mother had a dream and a vision to open up a daycare, to be a blessing to their community. And one year to this day, in, in 2019, they got to celebrate in August, and in 2020, they're going to be open for their second year. And that's a blessing. You know why? Because they believe that. They may not know exactly what they're doing. They may not know exactly if this is the right location, but I'll tell you, they've been packed ever since. Sometimes they had to turn people away because they were packed. I'll tell you this, the crazy thing is, they know that God is there in their situation, and, and, the, and the mother and daughter is Miss Diana and Kimberly. They know that God is in their situation, the blessings that get to come out of that, that business that they have, the kids' lives get changed, and the families' lives get changed, and not even just that. Out of the 22 guests that came in our Thanksgiving Friday service, most of those were their employees that they had at their academy. That is a blessing to know that God is there in every situation of your life in your business, and in your family. I know 100%, I know 100% that I can stand here and say that God is able and God is there. When I, when I, when I thought about these stories when I was writing it, man, I was just crying my eyes out. They're not even my stories. They're not even my, like, testimonies, you know, but the best part about it is this. 
is that I know that God is able and I know that God is always there. And I know 100% that you can't tell these two families that those stories aren't real. Because they'll stand and tell you before everybody, before everybody and say, yeah, my dad accepted Christ. Oh yeah, God gave me that business and we're succeeding. Our God is able and our God is there. These are the two things so far that you can run with in 2020 and know 100% that your God is able and your God is there. And the last part that I want to share is this, is believe that he cares. Believe that he cares. And in that scripture, then the father realized that this was the exact time at which Jesus has said to him, your son will live. So he and his whole household believed. You know what's the best part about that scripture there? So he and his whole household believed. When you can believe that Jesus cares about you and your family, you will see a change in your entire family. See, if you look about the Andrade family, it was Ramon, then the siblings. And the best part about that too, Miss Diana and Kimberly, their families to that family. And then when I think about Ann Lynn and Cindy, they cared, both families cared because they have received the Holy Spirit and they have received God's love in their heart. And they know 100%. One day, our Father will come to know the Lord because if he cares about me this way, he cares about my Father also. And we saw it unfold before our eyes that not only is he able, not only is he there, but he cares for every single person. When I think about the story and I think about the scripture, I'm reminded, I'm reminded by the heart of the father. The father was in desperation. And he said, I, I, I want my son to live. I want my son to not die, I'm sorry. I know that there is a savior out there that the world is talking about. And if he can just come and visit my son, the situation will change. And that heart that he had for his child he believed that God was able. He believed that God would be there. And he believed, lastly, that God would care so much. Jesus would care so much that he would change the situation of his son. <clears throat> I want to share a story that ties in with just that. In 2018, a young man came up to me and said, man, I need to pray for my brother. The last words that the brothers say, said to each other was this. I don't even want to go to your funeral. I don't even want you to be there. There's so much hatred between these two brothers. But one of the brothers experienced God's love. And I, I, may, I may believe that he may experience God's love fully for the first time. Because when God's love came on his life, the first thing he thought about was this. I've got to love my brother so that I can experience God's love fully and so that my brother can experience God's love too. And that person is Edgar. He sits in this room. I remember 2018 at Revival Conference, I told everybody on, at, at the service that I was leading, I said, get together and pray for your family. <coughs> I remember seeing Edgar sit in the very back. He just had his head down. He had his hands on the chair, on the, on the chair, um, on the back of the chair. He's just resting his hands there. And he was just thinking, he was just thinking. And at that time, it was the Andrade family that was up here praying together. And I know that in his mind, he was like, yeah, that's, that's my family, but, but, but my real family, my, my, my siblings, my, my brother who, who I've had hatred for, or had bitterness for, who, and he has hatred for me. 
God, this love that I'm experiencing from you, I want to experience it with him and I want him to experience it himself. And he said on that week, his sister gives him a call and says, Edgar, you gotta do something. Your brother, he's not going down the right path. You gotta do something. And Edgar was telling me that he was praying for opportunity and he could just muster up whatever he could say in the text message. And he said, okay, I'll do lunch or I'll do dinner. You know, the brother that he hasn't spoken to in years, he picks up the phone and either he texts or calls his brother and he says, hey, let's, let's go out. Thinking he was gonna get denied. For years, he hasn't spoken to his brother. The last thing they said to each other is they don't wanna see each other at the funerals or whatever. His brother picks up the phone and says, hey, Okay, let's, let's, let's go out to eat. And they talk and Edgar shares his heart and they forgive each other at that moment. For years, they've never spoken together. They've never spoken to each other. They didn't even wanna look at each other. And for years, they went through that pain. But on the day that Edgar received Jesus's love and knew that Jesus cares, he knew that Jesus cared for his brother too. In 2019, in 2019, God saved that family. And Edgar and his brother were able to be true brothers again. And I got to witness in 2019, and I was there at their wedding, that his best man was his brother, which he never thought probably would happen. They probably would have had the wedding without him. But God made it possible for two brothers who have never talked to each other in years. Because God cares about our family, and God cares about our life when we put it in his hands. And the things that we pray, the things that we desire, God cares for those things. And I got to watch and I got to meet Edgar's brother. And the crazy thing is, they look just alike. And it was so great to see them and it was so great to see the joy that they had and they're hanging out with each other and the joy that his brother had on his face. And Edgar, you know, shared with me that his brother was sharing, you know, the words, the toast that he wanted to share and he read it to him. And you know the best thing about that is, it was the day that Edgar realized that Jesus cared about him and he knew that if Jesus cares about him, he cares for his family too. And something that I wanna share with you guys is this. Before you leave today, just realize that he is able, he is there and he cares. He cares for you and he cares for your family, so don't give up. And in 2020, right on that list, I declare in Jesus' name that I will see blank here at church with me, that their life will be changed because they will accept Christ. I believe in Jesus' name and write it out. For many of you guys that don't believe that that story is true, I've had students leave the church and come back and their lives are changed forever. I've had brothers leave church and come back. And in 2020, I'm gonna see them forever because their lives are changed. Because God is able, God is there, God cares. And don't let, don't ever forget that. In 2020, when you go through some struggles or whatever it is, know that God is able and God is there and he cares. You know. I wanna share a story with you guys and how I know that God cares and God has used me in some way to care for somebody that needed love. It was just last week. I had a student come up to me. Daddy said, he just looked at me. Now, I haven't seen the student in a long time. And, and he goes, Pastor Sam, do you shave? I said, whatever I have, I try to shave. And I thought that this student was making a joke at me or something, you know? And he was like, do do, do you shave like here though? And I was like, yes. How do you shave? And I was like, with the electric shaver. What's that? I said, you don't know what electric shaver is? He goes, no. Can you teach me how to shave here? And I said, Yeah, I was kind of confused. And he goes, man, that would be awesome because I never really had a dad to teach me how to shave. And 
You know, there's a lot of people in this world that just need love. And when you can give them the pure sincerity love of Jesus out of your life to pour into their lives, you can change their life forever. So what did I do? I went to go get an electric shaver for this, this student. And I saw him on Friday. And I said, hey, I got something for you. He goes, what? And I pulled out the box with the electric shaver. And he just looked at me and goes, are you serious? Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You know, my dream in 2020 and my dream in 2019 was to always show young students that God cares for them, that God isn't boring and God is still relevant in their lives today and God can trend. And it starts with your life. If you can show the world that he is able, that he is there and that he cares, this world will change forever. Our church will change forever. So before we leave, I wanna pray for all of us. And I wanna ask that we stand right now. And I have just one question to ask you. My question is this, what are you believing God would do for your life this year? What are you believing that God can do for your life this year? What are you believing God can do for your life this year? And know that whatever that thing is, God is able, God is there, God cares. Holy Spirit, I thank you so much for this message and the clarity of my vision that you have given me. Lord, for all the testimonies that I was able to share today of the lives that were changed in this room, we give you praise and glory for those because without you, there was no possibility, but with you, lives were changed. And God, I ask right now for every thing that someone wrote on their list and what we're believing that you can do for us in 2020 as a church and as individuals. Help us to believe and help us to know that you are able, you are there, and you care for our situation, Lord. We give you all the praise. We give you all the praise, Lord. God, give our church clear vision. Give us clear vision and help us to grow and help us to go and help others in our world today. And God, I declare that we will see this church grow. I declare that we will see ministries grow. I declare that we will see individuals grow in their identity in you because you are fulfilling the things that you are doing in their life, Lord. And I thank you for the lives that are changed, Lord. And we love you so much, God. You deserve all the praise in the world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Church, before we leave, I wanna say something really quick. As a pastor here, our goal, our vision, is to see y'all get closer with Jesus. I challenge you to do just that. Get closer with him. Get closer with him. Take your relationship with him even deeper. We have an opportunity today that we want to start. For the young adults and the career folks, Pastor Michael is going to lead just a little discussion about the message we had today and how you can just dig a little bit deeper, dive a little deeper, just talk to each other about what you learned today. And I believe that the community that we are going to grow here at our church is going to change everything in 2020. So let's go and enjoy some coffee, some donuts, some kolaches, and let's just share what God has done in our life and just bring some joy into the lives of others. And if you need prayer, the pastors will be here at the front. We love you guys so much. God bless. We'll see you later.